Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is about tarot and me. I wanted to give you an introduction in how to you might use tarot as a divination tool. And so I thought it would be really good if we could have a look at tarot and Ginny together. Today's video is sponsored by the platform Keen, who have a wealth of psychics and astrologers to choose from. However, more on that later, and I want to reveal my experiences with them and what happened, because it's quite spooky. However, let's go back to the tarot. A tarot deck is simply a deck of cards with a variety of symbols on them. The modern day tarot that we all know today is the one that has the four suits, pentacles, the wands, the suit of cups and the suit of swords. Four suits, they're numbered one to ten and then you have a king, a queen, a knight and a knave in each of the suits. And these four suits are known as the Minor Arcana. Then there is a group of 21 cards, which are known as the Major Arcana. These are a diverse set of cards, ranging anything from the devil through to a chariot, through to the well-known lovers. The tarot deck itself was invented in Northern Italy in the 1400s and were used simply as a card game. The card games from tarot decks then developed throughout the following centuries and people came to use them for divination as much as they had used the traditional playing cards for divination. So it is a simply a divination tool. There's nothing magical about them. There's nothing special about them. However, you can imbue them with your own energy and that makes them a bit more magical and a bit more special. The standard pack of tarot cards is literally a standard pack of tarot cards. People read tarot cards in a variety of different ways. They can read them by, once they've chosen their cards, to place them in a particular layout on the table. There's some very standard ones like the Celtic Cross. It's all the simple quick draw three card tarot, which is one of my favourites. People also interpret the tarot in different ways. My mother, who was incredibly psychic, stopped using the tarot because it inspired too many visions for her and so she'd be sitting there reading tarot for people and then she'd have a vision and she said more often than not it was a dreadful vision you know death trauma destruction whatever and she didn't want to tell the people about the death trauma destruction whatever that was coming their way so she'd sit with it and she said it used to give her the heebie-jeebies that she'd have to sit with all this knowledge so she stopped reading people's tarots because they bought on her prophetic visions. So interestingly, tarot doesn't work for me that way. However, I'm a pretty good tarot card reader who I thought I would test out some tarot card readers for you. So this leads me on to today's sponsor. Keen is a platform containing hundreds of psychics and astrologers. It's a one-stop shop for your psychic requirements. You can contact them either through a telephone call or through instant messaging, and you can have a response from your chosen psychic within minutes. The platform's really easy to use. It's got lots of filters on it, so you can decide whether to have a tarot card divination session with somebody who's particularly good at love, for example. If you would like to have a go with Keen, go through my link as this gives you 10 minutes with any one of their astrologers or psychics for just $1.99. And this can save you a massive $99. Some of the psychics on there charge $50 a minute and you'll get 10 minutes with them for $1.99. So do try it out. I'll put the link in the description below and as a pinned comment, do have a go and try through that link. I filtered my results looking for a tarot card diviner. I wanted one that had a particular interest in financial and career uh, divination. And so eventually I hit upon this lady here. I decided that I wanted to spend exactly the same amount of money that I would charge for a tarot reading. So that's what I did. I gave this lady the same question that I have asked myself many times over and she drew three cards. I didn't ask her to, I didn't tell her anything else about me apart from my name and my birth date. 
She drew three cards. And do you know what was quite spooky? Is that I have been drawing those three cards for the last year. And these cards are the Chariot, the Empress and the Tower. So, Tower's a bit worrying, isn't it? It's a bit of a worrisome card, that one, really. However, her interpretation of them was pretty much on a par of my interpretation of them, but I'm still unsure about the tower, and I think she was too. What do you think these three cards mean? She was spookily accurate in her card pulling, so let's find out if she's right in her interpretation. So how do you read tarot cards? I can only show you how I do it. So my way is to take your pack of cards and to shuffle them whilst holding whatever... And to shuffle them pretty badly while holding the question in your mind of what you want to ask. Once you feel that you have shuffled the cards to your liking, then I always like to cut the cards. A simple... Ta-da! Your pack is now ready for choosing. I would recommend if you're going to start, start with a three card spread. Take your cards that you've cut and shuffled and carefully spread them out across the table. Then gently run your hand across the top of the pack. And when your palm feels different and mine feels hot, that is the card that I will choose. I mean, if you can't do the hand technique, you could just wait for the cards to jump out at you when you're shuffling, or you can use a pendulum. Once you've chosen your three cards, it's a really good idea to use a yes or no divination tool to help you. And I use a pendulum. And this is my new wooden one, which I bought this weekend with the Devon Dowsing Association. Hello, Devon Dowsers. Shout out to you. You're all witches, by the way, I thought. I tend to find that I read them very intuitively. So I don't look at the book and the book doesn't work for me. It certainly works for lots of other people, but not me. So I tend to look at the card and hold the question in my mind that is being set to that card. And then if anything about the picture, the words on it, the um, state of it, or may maybe it's even what I think of when I look at this card jumps out at me, then that is going to be something that I'll intuitively start to talk about. Other top tips for tarot are when you first get the tarot cards, let them sit with you for a while and you will then feel the information flowing into you. Try to not get bogged down in what the book says. The book might give you a clue as to where this card will take you, but it's difficult if you constantly refer to the book. If you pull one of the suits, a king, a queen, a knave or a page, I normally take this as reference to a person, a person that the sitter knows or might even be themselves. And if I pull one of the numbered suits, often it will again refer to a person However, these suits tend to be about everyday, normal activities. The major arcana cards, if I pull those, that's more life path divination. So it's a broader picture. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that happens all the time. It's a bit of a rubbish tip, that is. However, you start off with that general premise, you can often find the true meaning of the card. There are so many different styles of tarot cards on the market today. So when choosing a tarot deck for your own use, I'd go with the one that makes you feel happy. Because if it makes you feel happy, you will intuitively be better with it. So that's my last piece of advice. Do leave me a comment below, especially about what you think those three cards mean for me. Please do like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. Or you can go to patreon.com and check out my page there. But otherwise, I will see you in a few days.